Hey everybody, Ian from Novel Music here, and in this video we're going to take a look at Suite 16, which is one of our two clock devices that ship with the Seeds collection, and it can be used to drive the sequencers also in the collection, Polymath and Model, or it can be used as a standalone device to send uh, MIDI information to a drum rack or any instrument for that matter. So let's take a look. Now if I was comparing this sequencer clock device to uh, chronology, I'd say that this one is a bit more experimental. The way that it works is that we have four possible rhythms that can be generated and based on here these bars, how high they are, these are what we're setting are called the weights. How likely are these particular uh, pulses to occur? Ultimately only one pulse occurs at a time, whereas in chronology you could have up to four pulses occurring at a time. This device is only one at a time. And you can enable and disable them if you wish. So if you only want to work with three possibilities, then just disable the fourth one or any of them for that matter. The next parameter down here describes the rate of each pulse that could be triggered. 1 16th here means 1 16 note. 2 16 means 2 16th notes and so on. So we can go up to 16. So the reason this is called Sweet 16, uh, besides being a bit of a pun, is that it's all based around the idea of number of 16th notes. So now I'm, tr I'm triggering this uh, drum rack, actually sampled from my drum kit, and you can see that based on the weights, most often we're hearing the second lane here. If I want more bass drum, I just raise this column. And I can, besides set, of course, the speed of the pulses here, choose the output MIDI note. So I, by default, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and that's C uh, MIDI note 36, which is the most common to trigger a bass drum, at least in Ableton Live. Um, so uh, if I want to change, let's say I want to change that snare drum to something else. To a rim shot sound. That's how I would do that. Good. I think uh, I'm going to change this also to another rim shot type of sound. And as I adjust these, I will get different rhythms. Now you may be listening to this and thinking it's fun to play with, but not the most fun to listen to. And that is why we have included a way to generate patterns that do repeat. Pattern is how many triggers that we are um, having in the memory buffer here. So eight is the default. And then the lock, which is something included on many of our devices, going from left to right will decrease the chance of a new value being generated and all the way to the right, it will lock it literally lock it to be the same, in this case, eight pulse pattern. And we can easily half or double this value with the side buttons here. Or we can, of course, just adjust the pattern length ourselves to whatever we want. And if I'm not happy with the pattern or I think it's time for a change, I can move this slider over, which will allow for new random values to happen. Now, depending on how you have these columns set up, right now I have them almost set to equal uh, chance. We may not get as much deviation of the value that we're looking for. I'm gonna change this to two sixteenth notes. And let's do a six, beep, a six uh, trigger pattern. Yeah, so, so we can do this until we're happy, satisfied with what we're getting. Ultimately, if it's a little too busy, we can change the trigger parameter up here. It does tend to favor the stronger parts of the beat, meaning if a quarter note is divided into four sixteenths, it favors the first and third sixteenth note. This works fine to drive a drum rack here, but it also can be used to drive the sequencers that are shipped with 
the seeds collection. So that is what we have down here. We have the hub output ports. Defaults are W, X, Y, and Z, which happen to be the default inputs on, for instance, Polymath. You can see here, that's how they're set. I've already gone ahead and made this sequence, which is going, it's going to trigger a uh, brass, low brass sound. And I've got it set up so that we're only listening for clock one. Clock one happens to be this column here, which is the um, triggering the bass drum sound. I'm gonna undo the lock a bit. And let's look at how this works over here. Every time clock one gets a pulse, it's sent over here and it triggers the next step in the sequence. Now, if I want, I can mix and match and start adding more. Yeah, I think I like that. And I'm going to change the speed of the bass drum to be uh, 4 16th notes. Great. Let's increase the triggers. And let's change the length of this pulse. Now there's one more mode of operation for Sweet 16, and that is over here on the Fix tab. And what this does is we still have the same four possible pulses that could be triggered. However, they will be triggered in an order determined here. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse, and random. So it's more predictable. In fact, the lock in this case doesn't really matter since it's set by this order. The only thing that the lock would be controlling in this mode is the triggers. Repeats allows us to repeat a step before it moves on. All the way up to 16 repeats. Okay, that's an overview of how Sweet 16 works. Very useful for driving our sequencers that come with the Seeds collection, but also as a standalone device and for generating more experimental types of patterns that most drum machines probably try to avoid, we are embracing. So I hope you enjoy working with that. Thanks for watching this video. Please consider subscribing to this channel. I will continue to make content that explores the different devices in the Seeds collection and Thanks for watching.